Hi guys, in this video we'll take a look at cancellation of factors, polynomial long division, examples, and we'll finish with a summary. So how can we extend the process of cancellation of factors? We know that we can sometimes use factorization to simply divide two polynomials. Let's say we have, in factorized form, 3x minus 1 multiplied by 2x plus 3, and all of this is divided by x plus 2 multiplied by 2x plus 3. Then we are able to cancel the 2x plus 3s from the top and the bottom. This leaves us with 3x minus 1 over x plus 2. And then we are able to manipulate the numerator and make it into a constant 3 minus 5 over x plus 2, a proper fraction. In general, this can be quite challenging when there is no factor to cancel. Let's say we have the expression 6x squared minus 13x plus 6 over 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Then we can factorise the numerator into 2x minus 3 multiplied by 3x minus 2, and we can factorise the denominator into x minus 1 multiplied by 2x plus 5. But here, there is no factor to cancel from the numerator and the denominator, so how can we proceed? We would like to develop a method to simplify these polynomial divisions in general. So what exactly is polynomial long division? There are some important terms that we need to be aware of when referring to division. Let's say we have 425 divided by 25. The result of this is 17. We call the 425 the dividend. We call the 25 the divisor. And we call the 17 the quotient. In this case, we have a remainder of 0. 25 goes into 425 exactly. We can then rearrange this equation into 425 on the left hand side is equal to 25 multiplied by 17 plus 0. So our dividend is equal to our divisor multiplied by our quotient plus our remainder. The method of polynomial long division is similar to long division of numbers. This is the polynomial long division for 425 divided by 25. We have our dividend, the 425. We have our divisor, the 25. And we have the quotient, our 17. Then as a result, we get a zero remainder. Then we can deduce that 425 divided by 25 is equal to 17 from this long division. Polynomial long division is best illustrated from an example. Let's say you wanted to take 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 over x minus 4. Firstly, we start by writing our bus stop and then writing our dividend 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 underneath the bus stop. And then we put our divisor x minus 4 over here. We start by dividing the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. So we start with our 2x cubed, the first term of the dividend, and our x the first term of the divisor, and we compute 2x cubed over x. This gives us 2x squared. And then we write this up here, in line with the x squared terms in general. This becomes the first term of our quotient. We then multiply the answer we get, which is the first term of the quotient, by the divisor. So our first term of our quotient 2x squared, we multiply by the whole divisor. So we have 2x squared multiplied by x minus 4. And this gives us 2x cubed minus 8x squared. Then we write this directly underneath our whole dividend. And again in line. So we have a 2x cubed here and our minus 8x squared here. 
We now subtract the second line from the first to cancel out the highest index term. So we subtract this line from our first line. This gives us a zero for the XQ terms, i.e. in particular, the highest index term has cancelled out. And then we have a minus 5x squared minus minus 8x squared, which causes a plus, and we have a plus 3x squared. We then bring down the first unused term to our new line. The first unused term is the minus 16x. So we get a minus 16x here on our new line. This new line becomes our new dividend. And so we can repeat this process until there are no unused terms. So we have our new dividend, 3x squared minus 16x. We take our first term of our dividend and divide by the first term of our divisor, giving the first term of our quotient. 3x squared over x is 3x. So we get a plus 3x here. Then we multiply our new term of our quotient by the divisor, and this gives us 3x squared and then a minus 12x. Then we subtract this from the previous line, and this ensures that we cancel out our highest index term, and so we remain with a minus 4x. Then we bring down our next unused term, i.e. the plus 10. So we get a plus 10 here. Then we repeat again, dividing the minus 4x by the x, giving us a minus 4. Then we multiply and write it down, so we get a minus 4x. And then we have a plus 16. Then we subtract this line from the previous. The x terms cancel out, we have a 10 minus 16, giving us a remainder of minus 6. When there are no unused terms, we can write down our answer where the final number is the remainder. Here we have no unused terms. We cannot bring down any more terms into our final line. So this value is our remainder. Therefore, our division of 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 16x plus 10 over x minus 4 is going to be equal to our quotient 2x squared plus 3x minus 4, that comes first. And then we add our remainder divided by the x minus 4 from our denominator. So we have a minus 6 over x minus 4. As a reminder, this is our quotient, the result at the top, and this value here is our remainder. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to divide 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 by 2x plus 5. Our first step is to divide the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. So we take our 2x squared, i.e. the first term of our dividend, and we divide by the first term of the divisor, i.e. 2x, and this gives us just x. Our second step is to multiply the divisor by the first term of the quotient. We have our whole divisor, which is 2x plus 5. And then we multiply by the first term of our quotient, so we multiply by the x. And this gives us a 2x squared plus 5x. Our third step is to subtract the resulting expression. So here we can set up our bus stop. We have our 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, the whole dividend and our divisor, 2x plus 5, and then we found the first term of our quotient, which is the x. We've multiplied and got 2x squared plus 5x, and now we're going to subtract off the resulting expression. So we subtract off this line from the first line, and this gives us a minus 2x. Our fourth step is to bring down the first unused term. Here we bring down our minus 5. Our fifth step is to divide the first term of the new dividend by the first term of the divisor. The first term of our new dividend is minus 2x. The first term of our divisor is 2x, so we divide by 2x. And this gives us 
a minus 1. Our sixth step is to multiply the divisor by the second term of the quotient. So we now have our new term of the quotient, minus 1. And we can multiply our minus 1 by a 2x plus 5 to give us a minus 2x minus 5. Our seventh step is to subtract the resulting expression. If we subtract this line from the above line, we're going to in fact get 0. And so our last step is to write down the answer. We have no remainder. And therefore our 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 divided by 2x plus 5 is going to just be x minus 1. This is our quotient on its own because we have no remainder. Our second example asks us to divide 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 14x plus 24 by x minus 6. Our first step is to divide the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. We take our 2x cubed, the first term of our dividend, and we divide by the first term of our divisor, which is just x. This gives us 2x squared. Our second step is to multiply the divisor by the first term of the quotient. So we have an x minus 6, this is the divisor, and we multiply by our first term of the quotient, which is this 2x squared. By expanding, this gives us 2x cubed minus 12x squared. Our third step is to subtract the expression. So now we can set up our bus stop. We have our 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 14x plus 24. We also have our divisor, which is the x minus 6. Our first term of our quotient is 2x squared. And we've multiplied to give 2x cubed minus 12x squared. Therefore, now we can subtract. And we're going to get a 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, which is 0. And a minus 15x squared plus a 12x squared, which gives us a minus 3x squared. Our fourth step is to bring down the first unused term. We can bring down our plus 14x to this line, giving us a minus 3x squared plus 14x. Our fifth step is to divide the first term of the new dividend by the first term of the divisor. So our new dividend is minus 3x squared. So the first term of our new dividend is minus 3x squared, and we divide this by the first term of our divisor, which is the x, giving us a minus 3x. Our sixth step is to multiply the divisor by the second term of the quotient. We have our divisor x minus 6. We multiply this by the second term of our quotient, which is a minus 3x. And this gives us a minus 3x squared plus 18x. Our seventh step is to subtract the resulting expression. We have the next term of our quotient, which is the minus 3x. We've multiplied and obtained minus 3x squared plus 18x. Now we can subtract this line from the previous giving us a 14x minus 18x, which is a minus 4x. Our eighth step is to bring down the last unused term. We have this plus 24, which comes down to here. Our ninth step is to divide the first term of the new dividend by the first term of the divisor. Our new dividend is minus 4x. Our first term of our new dividend is minus 4x, and we divide this by the first term of our divisor, which is just x. This gives us minus 4. Our tenth step is to multiply the divisor by the third term of the quotient. We have our divisor x minus 6, and we multiply by our third term of our quotient, minus 4, that we've just found. This gives us a minus 4x plus 24. Our eleventh step is to subtract the resulting expression. We have our minus 4, our next term of our quotient, and we've multiplied to give a minus 4x plus 24. Therefore, we now subtract this expression from the last, and we get precisely 0. Our last step is to write down the answer. And the answer is going to be, due to having no remainder, just our quotient, which is 2x squared minus 3x minus 4. Our last example asks us to find the remainder when 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4 is divided by x minus 1. Our first step is to divide the first term of the dividend by the first term of the divisor. 
our first term of our dividend is 3x cubed. And we divide this by the x, the first term of our divisor. This gives us 3x squared. Our second step is to multiply the divisor by the first term of the quotient. We have our divisor, x minus 1, and we multiply by our first term of our quotient, which is the 3x squared as above. This gives us 3x cubed minus 3x squared. Our third step is to subtract the resulting expression. Now we can set up our bus stop, and we have our dividend 3x cubed minus 2x squared, and then we should write in a plus 0x to act as a placeholder in case we need that column, and then we have a plus 4. Our divisor is the x minus 1, and we have our first term of our quotient, which is 3x squared. We've multiplied to obtain 3x cubed minus 3x squared. Then we can subtract, and we're going to get just x squared. Our fourth step is to bring down the first unused term. This is the plus 0x, so we get a plus 0x as a placeholder here. Our fifth step is to divide the first term of the new dividend by the first term of the divisor. Our new dividend is just x squared, and then we divide by the first term of our divisor, which is x, giving us just an x. Our sixth step is to multiply the divisor by the second term of the quotient. We have our divisor, x minus 1, and we multiply by our quotient, so we multiply by x. This gives us an x squared minus x. Our seventh step is to subtract the resulting expression. Our next term in our quotient is the plus x. Then we multiply to give an x squared minus x. And then we subtract. And this gives us just an x. Our eighth step is to bring down the last unused term. We have a plus 4 to bring down. Our ninth step is to divide the first term of the new dividend by the first term of the divisor. The first term of our new dividend is x, and the first term of our divisor is also x, and this gives us 1 upon division. Our tenth step is to multiply the divisor by the third term of the quotient. Our divisor is x minus 1. And our third term of our quotient is this 1. And so we just get x minus 1. Our eleventh step is to subtract the resulting expression. We have our next term of our quotient, which is the plus 1. We've multiplied to obtain an x minus 1, and then we can subtract. And this will give us just a 5 as our remainder. And so our last step is to write down the answer. We have our quotient, which is 3x squared plus x plus 1. And then we have to add on our remainder, 5, over our denominator, or our divisor, which is x minus 1. This is our final answer. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face, and together, let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.